What's up guys, if you're new here, I'm Maria. This is my dog, Blue, and we are living in my Land Rover Defender 110 on a 50-state road trip, traveling to every single state in the country. What some of you may not know is I started doing this in 2017, living out of a vehicle full-time. So over the years, I've put myself in some pretty shady situations. Was I just robbed? In today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing all of my safety tips and tricks with you guys, because while my channel may not be roaming safety, <laughs> I have pretty much gone through all trial and error of safety mishaps over the years so you guys don't have to i'm gonna break it down into three parts for you guys so first being tools and safety gear second being vehicle safety third being situational safety so let's get started with tools and gear starting off pretty basic here let's go with protection i have pepper spray on my keychain i have extra pepper spray in my console i also have a knife right next to me as i drive <laughs> mess with me you know? I also have, is it pepper spray? I have some sort of, yeah, I have jogger fogger back here in the back of my rig because I just like to think about where am I gonna be when a threat happens? If I'm inside the vehicle, I'm either gonna be up front driving or I'm gonna be back here sleeping. So I like to have way more than normal and also on either side of the rig. So if I do have a threat, I don't have to fumble around looking for it. I know I've got one here, I know I've got one there, I know I've got extra on the console. Make sure that you have a multitude of whatever weapon choice you would like to protect yourself. I like to have several. I'm just showing you some of them that I carry because I also don't want to tell you all of my secrets because what if you are a threat? You know what I mean? Can't give away everything. What else do I have? This right here is my camping locker. Oh my gosh, someone remind me I needed WD-40 these. In my camping locker, I have an ax to chop down wood for campfires, but also in case of a threat. I also have bear spray back here. Ooh, and a lot of propane. If you are gonna be hiking in backcountry, make sure you take this because there was a time when I didn't. Lesson learned. Everybody yelled at me, but I finally got it. While we're in the camping locker, this isn't related to protection, but keep a medical kit on hand. Last thing you wanna do is be injured and not be able to do anything yourself and be miles and miles away from a hospital. Another form of protection for me is this here dog. This here canine. Um, right, Blue? Are you my little nine millimeter? While Blue looks fluffy and cute, I know for certain if I was being attacked, Blue would be doing absolutely everything in his power to rip somebody's head off. So if you do trouble with a dog, especially if it's a protective breed, Blue also definitely makes me more aware. He's being an Aussie, very protective and loyal by nature, so very perceptive, very barky. You know what I mean? He likes to warn me of any potential threat, even if it's just a bag blowing in the wind. But hey, what I can say is that I would be less aware without him. So if you've got a good dog, priceless, you know? Travel with him. Might just save your life someday. Bubby, are you gonna save my life someday? A go bag or a survival bag is just a three day kit that you can essentially survive off of, or sometimes people pack them for like weeks. Mine is meant for maybe like three to five days, but it's just got all of the essentials. Let's say I crash Poe and I'm in the middle of nowhere and Blue and I have to hike to a town. It's gonna take us two days. I have everything in here that I would need to get us to that town and to survive it. I can do a more in-depth video about this if I need to someday, but it's just the basics. I have like an aluminum blanket, let's say it's cold, rope, a lighter, I have a medical kit for blue, but it would also double for me if need be. Water filtration system, three days worth of food for blue, water bottles, MRE. Pretty much guys, just get yourself a survival bag. You never need it till you do, you know? And it's just like peace of mind. What You never know when you're gonna total your car in the middle of wherever. You never know when you're gonna hit a deer, you know, so. Shout out to my brother for getting me this for I think a birthday present one year. I've had it forever, years and years and years. I think actually you can go back to a 2018 car tour of my Subaru and <laughs> find me pulling this thing out. The big thing is my go bag. Guns and coffee on it and it has like the Starbucks logo. <laughs> So just get it done, make one once, throw it in your roof rack, you're good to go. Garmin InReach, a satellite phone, get yourself one. Again, what if you're stranded? 
Okay, you, you work with me here. Let's work on this scenario. You totaled your car in the middle of nowhere. You got your go bag on. You got your go bag on. Your car's in flames behind you. You can't reach anyone because you don't have service. Get a satellite phone. I think you actually have GPS on some of these too. Mine's the Explorer Plus from Garmin. Get yourself whatever one works for you that you research and like. You know, just don't take me blindly saying that. Go get whatever works for you. This is what I have. Um, it's like 30 bucks a month or something like that. Again, peace of mind. I could call somebody, I could call 911. I could get somebody out to me. Help, you know? Pretty much just think of every single thing that could go wrong and prepare for it because it's better to be prepared and not need anything than vice versa. Couple other safety things that I always keep with me. One being pretty huge actually if you're gonna use any sort of propane is a carbon monoxide detector. I keep mine in my little library under the sink because I'm always cooking with propane. It's actually gone off a couple of times. So look, it's already saving me. I wouldn't have known that. I also have a window breaker. So should I ever get in a car crash and can't get out, I can break a window. I can cut a seatbelt. Although I don't know how I'm gonna reach the seatbelt cutter when it's mounted up here. See, look at me, figuring things out. I need to move this, because that would be useless if I needed it, and I was buckled in. But good to keep on hand. I'm, that's one thing I am glad that I have that I never traveled with before. Another thing worth protecting that I'm not sure many people think about is your digital assets online, which brings me to today's sponsor. Surfshark VPN is a way for you to protect your digital assets online because what a VPN actually does is it encrypts all of your information between your device and the internet. If you guys are longtime watchers of this channel, you know I have the biggest worry war of a father. He is always calling me and telling me every threat that's around me, which... We love him for, thanks dad. The man has been telling me to use a VPN for a very long time, especially because I'm a traveler, so I'm always on public Wi-Fi networks uploading videos to YouTube. What's really scary is that hackers can access you through public Wi-Fi networks, so they can find your location of where you are through your IP address and they can track you. Okay, for me, that's like the scariest thing in the world. They can access your financial information and steal your identity that way. They can hack your social media accounts. There's so many circumstances that you could be protected from if you used a VPN like Surfshark. Another added benefit is because Surfshark changes your IP address in order to protect you, you virtually can travel to any country in the world. Meaning, if you're someone out there who likes to watch Netflix, but let's say another country can access shows that you don't have here in the United States, you can change your location to that country and then you can watch that show show here in the US. Now all of your problems are solved. If you guys want to protect your digital assets like me, you can use this code and get 83% off plus an extra three months free. Link will be in the description below. Thank you Surfshark. Recovery gear. This bad boy has toe straps, recovery points. Keep this on hand at all times. I also have traction boards up in the roof rack. I also have a high lift jack. So again, also in the roof rack, what do I have? Jumper cables. I have like a battery powered jump start. So just, again, things that if within reason your car or truck breaks down, you can get yourself back on the road. I also have AAA, which I recommend everybody get, especially if you're gonna be traveling full time, you could use your satellite phone to call AAA and be like, <laughs> help, I'm stuck. Or you could like me, call your dad and be like, SOS, father. And then he'd be like, I told you so. You know, it's a little different, it goes differently for everybody, but. Just something to think about. I think when it comes to mechanics, you always just want to stay ahead of the curb. So common knowledge, like stay up to date on your maintenance, your oil changes, keep all your uh, fluids level at all times, check it often. Like every time you stop for gas, check your fluids. And uh, yeah, I think the rest is kind of self-explanatory, but definitely keep your vehicle up to date and safe because it's your home if you're like me. Last but not least is situational awareness. Like I said, blue here is a huge help for me situationally because while you should always be aware of your surroundings and I try my best to be, if I ever am distracted, I really pay attention to this kid right here. He's always barking if he thinks something fishy is happening. Don't you pop. Yeah, stay aware of your surroundings, trust your gut. There's something to be said for trusting your gut instinct. If you guys watch my channel, you have seen me before. Get to camp, get set up, make food, and then feel like it was a little bit sketchy and I didn't like the gut feeling that I got when I arrived there and so I left and I may have had to sleep at a rest area or somewhere that wasn't as glamorous or wasn't as great but I think if your gut is telling you that something is shady it is same thing goes for people okay 
trust your gut. Another thing I always do is back into my campsites so I'm facing the road. Just in case there ever is a threat on the vehicle, I can just drive out. You guys see me do that pretty often on the channel. If there's ever a chance that I can back into a site, I will. I just like the comfort of knowing all I gotta do is pull forward. <laughs> you know, like, imagine having a threat and you feel like you need to leave a situation or somebody's trying to get into your truck while you're in it and you're like, hold on, wait, please, I have to do a 17 point turn to get out of here and to leave. Like, that would be the worst. Last two things and then we're gonna wrap it up. One thing that I do personally that may not apply to you if you're not big into social media, but one thing I always try to do is I take my posts and my stories and I post them after I leave somewhere or as I'm leaving. At least that way I'm like ahead of the game. Same thing goes for my videos. I always post like two to four weeks delayed. Does that make sense? Like the videos you guys see, I filmed usually two to four weeks prior. So that way I'm just a little bit ahead of the curb before content goes out to the public. And last but not least, give your location to your friends and family. My parents both have my locations. A lot of my friends have my locations. Pretty much anyone that asks me for it, if you're close to me, you get it just because I'm like, here, if I go missing, help the FBI. You know what I mean? I also warn my parents anytime I know I'm gonna be out of service for an extended period of time because knowing them, they would like call the cops and I would just be at a campsite for three days, so. Communicate with your friends and family, share your location. Anyways, over the last almost six years, that's kind of all of the things that I have been doing to keep myself safe. If you guys have anything else that you think is a great tip, please write it in the comments below. Let it be a community thing. Let everybody share their ideas of how to stay safe because it's obviously very important. And I'm roaming reckless. So it's like, I've got the basics for you. I don't really do anything fancy. I just try to be smart. Um, you could argue that I'm not, <laughs> I try. Anyways, that's all for Blue and I today, so thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye!